Hello everybody and welcome to another Scream Queens review. Today it is season one episode seven, Beware of Young Girls. And I was wondering throughout the whole episode why it was called this and we found out at the end. Uh, this episode was pretty good overall, although I did think parts of it were transitional, meaning uh, in my opinion it was a mid-season episode that gave a lot of exposition and information we will need for the rest of the season, and there's nothing really wrong with that. It was done in a pretty good way. So we start with a weird opening scene with a funeral of Chanel number no. 2, and then we find out that uh, all the remaining Chanel's decide to use a Ouija board to contact her from the beyond, and that basically sets up a more important scene later in the episode. So a pretty good opening scene. We also get a little bit of Gigi in this episode, which made me happy, and we already know she's somehow linked to some of the strange things going on. She makes a very suspicious phone call and then hangs up when Wes walks in. She's also hanging out a lot with Grace, I think probably to gain her trust. But I gotta be honest, the best parts of this episode all focused on Dean Munch, who I felt was an underused character until tonight when she was used a lot. So we get some backstory on this. We meet Dean Munch's ex-husband, who would not survive the episode predictably. And we get this girl named Feather that we find out uh, was having some kind of affair with him. And this is what caused uh, the Dean to divorce him. And uh, we also learn uh, some of the things she's capable of when she's upset. So there were some other things that happened in this episode. We had a very bizarre uh, Chad Chanel argument and, and makeup scene. Uh, that's all I'll say about that. The dean uh, then gets in trouble as she is accused of uh, disposing of her ex-husband, but more on that a little bit later as she gets out of that pretty well. And we also get some of Grace and Pete in this episode, and they're pretty happy because they think the case is over until they go to visit the dean, who's in a mental hospital. And um, she does a pretty good job of faking crazy, actually. This, this episode was all about the dean, and unfortunately, uh, I didn't think the Grace Pete stuff was all that interesting, but it didn't really kill the momentum of the episode either. So then we get a scene with the Chanel's contacting Chanel number two again because they want to know who the killer is. And let's just say that Chanel number two accuses Chanel, who is not happy about it. So all the other Chanel's decide they have to get rid of her. But I'll just say it all works out in the end, and all these Chanel's are united by the end of the episode. In a way, only Scream Queens could do it. This led to some funny scenes, especially some of the proposed methods to get rid of uh, Chanel. I guess I call her Chanel number one. <laughs> so then the climax of this episode pretty much comes where we get a Pete, uh, Grace, and the Dean scene, which, which pretty much wraps up uh, that feather is the one who gets blamed for uh, killing the Dean's ex-husband. But then, in a shocking twist, it turns out that the Dean actually admits that she did this and she used, you know, the campus killings, all the other ones going on, as a cover so that she wouldn't be suspected. So this episode really gave us a lot of insight into the Dean's character, and we know she's capable of committing this kind of act. However, I think there's more to it, I'm pretty sure. She's not our main killer. I'm pretty sure this is just a, a mislead. But Jamie Lee Curtis was great tonight, and she really carried this episode. I really wish we'd be seeing more of Gigi. We're getting uh, very few scenes of her. And uh, once again, there were a lot of interesting musical choices. But I did feel that the episode flowed well and moved along our plot to what I think is going to be a really good second half of the season. So overall, not a great episode, but a pretty solid one. No real complaints. And I give Beware of Young Girls a 3.5 out of 5. As always, you guys can comment and tell me what you thought of the episode and how you feel the show's going. As always, thanks very much for watching.